Yeah, on the Toast Burger Show with Scott Hendricks, it is uh, four minutes past nine on your Wednesday morning. A uh, big good morning to you if you've just joined us. I've just been joined uh, in the studio by the lovely Tali. How are you? Hi, good morning. I'm very good, thank you. Ah, so uh, what's been going on? It has, um, I've interviewed you a couple of times over the years. It is finally good to, uh, to finally meet you, but... Um, just, just give you a little bit of an introduction. You obviously you've been the world's best female uh, drum and bass MC, uh, spending ten well spent ten years living in the UK. Now mm-hmm. you're back in New Zealand. Yep. And uh, you're from Taranaki. That yep, correct? that's right. And uh, so, well, we'll try and claim you as well, just being a New Zealander. But um, <laughs> it is a pleasure to have you up here. And uh, have, I just actually wanted to know about this. Have you dropped the MC from the front of your name? Yeah, but I ha- I have like. I kind of did ages ago. Yeah. And uh, but some people just still insist on saying MC Tiley's here or this is MC Tiley. Right. Um, well, I apologise. No, I'll that's just okay. Tiley now. It's okay. Um, it's just kind of like um, I sort of dropped it just because I don't really. Uh, well, the thing is, like after ten years in the industry mm. uh, of, of drum and bass, people know who I am now and they know what I do. There doesn't really need to be an MC in front. The MC used to be there so that people recognise that I wasn't just like a singer right. like I was an MC I was actually like freestyling is that, is that to do with the fact that maybe in for instance like drum and bass being an MC is kind of harder to get into if you're a female or, or yeah but and also like everyone's MC whoever you know yeah. or, or or dynamite MC stamina MC or MC this person or MC that you know but I just sort of think there's now, nowadays like for example um, there's a lot of people who have dropped the MC from their names and so have I and, and just because now I'm, I want to be recognised for more than just MCing as a singer and a songwriter so yeah and you know Tali's my name and I just I hate it when people are like oh what's up MC Tali I'm just like just lose the MC bro it does feel kind of official doesn't it it's yeah. like oh. but I mean how are things anyway how long have you been back in New Zealand now since uh, November last year Cool, so, so nearly a year. Yeah, wow, quite a while, yeah. quite a while. So um, your, new ca- new, your new album came out on Friday. Yeah. And uh, how does it feel to finally get it released? You were just telling me before that you did all the PR yourself. Yep. It's on your own record label. Yep. Is it-, it feels really amazing because yeah. it's sort of been one of those trips where um, there were times where I was sort of like doubting myself and, and sort of saying, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? But there was never any moment where my heart didn't say to me stop or turn around or don't do that it, mm. the whole way my gut feeling has been just do it yourself just go for it and put yourself out there and I'm really one of these people who believes in seeing an opportunity and grasping it and not being afraid to be ambitious and put yourself at the forefront of your product and be proud of, of what you've done because for I think sure. it's easy to hide behind a label or blame it on the PR guy if it doesn't <laughs> do what it's supposed to do but when you're doing it on your own you have no one to blame but yourself Self. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing, but um, so far it's working for me. People seem to like the fact that I'm doing my se- it myself. Yeah. Um, people have been very supportive, such as yourselves, and um, other other like TV and, and radio has been really supportive. And now the written the r- written press is kind of starting to get on board now mm. too. So I think it's just a matter of like. Yeah, not being afraid to sort of say, this is me, this is what my product is, I'm really proud of my music, I'm excited, I want you to be excited too. Like, for example, I've I've rung a lot of people and they've said, oh, yeah, send me the CD. And I've said, no, 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 let's meet and have a coffee and I'll give you the CD in person. Yeah, for sure, fair enough. So, I mean, you've done not just with that, but, I mean, with a whole bunch of things taken in a completely different direction. This is focusing more on, you know, your songwriting and and, uh, your voice. uh, How's that been or what prompted you to do that? Well, I've always wanted to do a sort of more, I don't want to say commercial because it's not that commercial, but I've always wanted to do something that was more about me and really by me, if that makes sense. Um, Just because when you work with, uh, in in drum and bass and you make an album, for example, unless you work with one producer, uh, you t- you kind of you know you end up working with maybe three or four people mm. on the album, and you end up having to compromise a lot on um, on what you want because the product doesn't just. I, I keep referring to the music as a product, but that's because it kind of you know that's the easiest way to explain it. But it doesn't just represent you; it represents the producer as well, yeah. um, and it, it also represents the label that you're on. So there might have been times where I'm like, oh, I really want to write a song like this, and they're like, well, that doesn't really represent us. So with this album. It was like, I want it to be 100% completely written by me, produced by one producer. Mm. Um, although there is another tune that snuck <laughs> on there that's by um, Artificial Intelligence. It's the only DMB tune on the album. Yeah. It's pretty chilled. But um, 
yeah, like I said, it's it's coming completely from an angle of of, of, of me and uh, and who I am, and I really feel like this is the most personal work I've ever done. Right. Um, and therefore, I feel like it's probably the the best work I've ever done. Yeah. And I mean, the title of things to come is that kind of you know a little insight into maybe what we can expect from you yeah, in the future. And absolutely. But it's not just that. It's also the idea that. Um, since I've come back to New Zealand, I mean, I wrote the whole album, apart from one song, I wrote the whole album back in New Zealand. Mm. And the whole time I was writing it, great things were happening to me. Um, I was getting a lot of bookings. I was getting um, great sort of like, um, I was asked to be a brand ambassador for Moochie Clothing and also Billabong Amazon. Cool. And... Um, not only that, but just meeting really great things, and I've put together an eight-piece band, and I just, the whole way along, I felt like the universe has really been blessing me, and yeah. the, you know, like, my, my, my life is really exciting right now, and I feel incredibly excited by what's to come, so the idea of things to come is kind of like the anticipation, the excitement, and that's what the title track is all about as well. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, having been around the dance scene for so long now, I mean, obviously, you're always um, being a musician as well, going to draw comparisons to what you were previously or, yeah. or what you, your previous work was. How's the reception been so far with people you've been, you know, I mean the people who are really close to you are going to support you always but yeah. I mean people who are kind of on the cusp have they been alright uh, about it? I've had I've only had a few but uh, they annoy me anyway. I've had comments <laughs> on my Facebook page saying, I've just heard a snippet of your album No D&B or Where's the drum and bass? And it's just like if you had actually been paying attention to anything I've been saying over the last 10 months, I've been saying I'm not writing a drum and bass album. If I wanted to do another drum and bass album, I would have, but instead I'm challenging myself. You know, no person is one dimensional and, you know, I get these people who say to me, yeah, but drum and bass is my life. It's all I listen to. And I, and I say to them, well, if it's all you listen to, I feel sorry for you because <laughs> yeah. it's like only ever wearing one color clothing or only ever eating one food group. It's like boring. Life is so much more exciting. And I take a lot of influences from different genres. Before before I was into drum and bass, I was desperately into hip hop mm. and I love R&B and I've been massively into indie rock, you know, and I even love a little bit of like pop. So I, I saw and, and I definitely love electronic music, not just drum and bass. I love house. I love techno, you know, uh, it, it, for me. In order to be a really good musician, you should be able to draw on all influences and genres around you. And that means embracing them and listening to them. Mm. Now, for the more worldly <laughs> of my fans, they're totally all for it. Yeah. They understand the progression. They, they know that I've been in the scene for 12 years. And they, they understand that this is something that is not only necessary for me to evolve as a musician, but it's kind of, it's a breath of fresh air. It's, yeah. it's like, it's, it's in New Zealand as well, in Aotearoa, there's not really anybody that's kind of like me, who's come from the scene that I have, who sings, who freestyles, who writes all her own music, who busts a mean dance move on stage, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> <laughs> there isn't anyone like me, you know, and so I'm hoping that that will be something that people embrace and are excited about and can relate to. Oh, for sure, for sure. Well, it's been fantastic having you up here. What I just want to go back. I mean, you've been back in New Zealand a year now. Yeah. Favourite thing about being back in NZ, though. I mean, you've been away for 10 years before that. Um, Just, you know what? So many things. But I've got to say, where I live is pretty amazing. I live on, on the shore in mm -hmm. North Coat Point. But oh, it's really nice out there. Yeah, right? and I live, I actually overlook a bush, yeah. native bush, and it's really quiet and it's really dark. And when you, when you, dark at night, and yeah. when you, when you uh, <laughs> come to my house, it feels like you're in Titarangi yeah. or somewhere out west. Um, and I just sit and I look out at the native bush and I see tuis and wax eyes and wood pigeons and like parakeets, Australian parakeets yeah. hanging out in the trees. And I just say to myself, this is so incredible because I used to live in like a one bedroom flat with my husband in East Hackney, yeah. you know, and the view was like looking at some other estate houses and it just, <laughs> it was grimy, you know. Yeah. So being back in New Zealand, but there's so many amazing things about being back, just being surrounded by Kiwis again yeah. is a wonderful thing. Like, we should be so proud of ourselves yeah. as a nation because we really are the best. <laughs> yeah, we are. No, for sure. I mean, have you uh, got plans to stay here for good? Absolutely. For good awesome. I, I, I mean, I will never say 
for good for anything yeah. you know for anything in life I will never say for good because you cannot can never predict what the future holds but that's what's so exciting about life is you never know from one day to the next what's going to be around the corner you may think that your life is ordinary and mundane but if you want to make it exciting and you want to fill it with opportunities all you have to do is 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 manifest that man be yeah. positive and and I truly believe that that's that's it was the best thing ever to come back to New Zealand because that's that's what's happening to me right now. For sure. Well, we're glad to have you back. Thanks, bro. You know, I, I like the new album, and we're going to play a tune from it now. Um, Jet Set Love's been, you know, slammed by us and uh, by a lot of other people as well. You uh, you wanted to play a different tune off. I do, though. and you know what? You are the first station who's getting to play it. Yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm giving you that. like I'm giving you like a, a world exclusive play. Um, because you've been so supportive, you've made my CD album of the week, and you know I, I really appreciate that support. It it means a lot to me. No problem. So this is um, this tune we're going to play is called "Of Things to Come." It's the title track off the album, and it it generally sums up pretty much how I'm feeling about life right now. And I, I kind of hope it inspires uh, people listening out there to. Sweet. Well, Peace. here it is. A tally of things to come.
past nine. You're on the Toast Breakfast Show with Scott Hendricks. Tally of things to come. It's the uh, second single of her brand new album. Titled album of things to come. It was released last Friday. Uh, I do believe it is available for digital download.